Okay. Hall praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God. We are back one more time. I hope we are well rested. Do we feel well invigorated? Um, that is a beautiful testimony from our brother Sebastian. God bless you. I, I, I pray that God will grant each and every one testimony to you. Uh, is there anyone who has a testimony they can share? Because God has really done something for us. Okay, you can share with us. Good one, Thomas. <laughs> Good one. Good. But my, before that, uh, many years, two few years back, I was always relying on that rent money. Is all oh, rent money? You know, rent money. But I never thought of Jesus is my provider. He is my yeah. provider. Yeah. But in this way, the Lord showed me it's not the rent money. Look at me. Mm -hmm. So when this situation happened, I literally forgive my sin. I said, Lord, please forgive me because mm -hmm. I was looking at that rent and looking at that flat, my source. But you are my source. Mm -hmm. You are mm. my provider. Mm. When I said that, when I repented, mm. guess what? Uh, in few days, I got my, you know, the the hope of my flat to mm. return. Good, right. Yeah. Before all that time, the Lord was holding that. The Lord was holding yes. that. When you going to repent? When you going to say mm. that I am your Lord? Mm -hmm. yeah. You are the provider. And yeah. you know, it's like. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Any testimony? Because we have a lot of testimony to share. We need to testify. You see, when you testify, you are actually praising God. And you are shaming the enemy. Yes, our sister Lola. Sometimes I like to share my personal details, but like Pastor uh, Sebastian was saying, and you about go show ya. Uh, we were supposed to go this way, but we go to show us the other way. The other way, way yeah. Uh, we were praying for this opportunity for Roger to look for another job. As most of you, they know Roger is doing a cleaning job.
Yes. Open up, yeah, yeah, yeah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. People, God bless you. There are many people like that who, who don't want to share their testimony. But testimonies are things that open more doors for us. You see, God will test you with the one. If you are able to appreciate him with the one he's given you, then he adds more to it. If you appreciate God, He will appreciate you. He will take you high. Because the Bible says we overcame the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of our testimony. Now, the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark, do you know what was in? It was manna and the law of the Lord and the word of Aaron. Now, why did the Lord put manna in it? Because manna was so that they would not forget what God did for them. Because manna, there was a time they were hungry and the Lord rained down, literally rained down food to them. And manna, in another, in, uh, uh, the, another word for manna means, what is this? What is this? What is this? So the Lord created a miracle for them that they said, what is this miracle? What is happening? What is the breakthrough? So the Lord said to them, you know what, put it in there because I know human beings, you easily forget things. So no, I'm going to put it in the Ark of the Covenant so that you do not forget. So one thing we must always remember, not to forget the deliverance of the Lord, not to be embarrassed about sharing our testimony, not to be so sad, not to be shy, not to be feeling awful or bad for sharing our testimony because God wants you to share. No, that is coming to where I'm coming to. Because when we are going, we are going to share something. A testimony. So God appreciates when you share what he has done for you to man or to people. It makes him look good. It's like you're reading his resume. You're reading his, his application, his resume, his, his curriculum vitae, his experiences to people. This is what he can do. This is what he, So please, for men's fault, let no one be embarrassed, feel shy to testify of what the Lord has done because God has done great things. Roger, yeah. 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 Yeah.
They started calling him. <laughs> you see? Mm. God bless you. Sebastian. Good. Good. Right place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Good one. Good. You are the right place. God bless you. God bless you. The word. You will finish in Jesus' name. Sebastian, want to say something? You know what sister was saying? I think sometimes, I mean, not a bit. As humans, mm -hmm. we tend to complain. Mm -hmm. You know, when, man, the, when the mana came, I'm like, what is this? What is this? But then they got tired of it. Mm. And the rod, <coughs> the significant while I was learning about the three things that's inside of the, the act, sorry, the pack, mm. uh, the ark, sorry. Um, you know, the rod signifies leadership. Mm -hmm. And people of, of Israel denied the leadership. Mm. And the Ten Commandments is for Israel to be sanctified. They denied the law to be sanctified. And mm. sometimes as situations go on, we denied God's deliverance, mm -hmm. as in provision for us, mm -hmm. the manna, we denied God's leadership, and we denied God's sanctification. Mm -hmm. But there's a beautiful thing that we have Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. because the angels, the angels that didn't have their wings open, the angels had their wings closed. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the wings that were closed signifies the grace and the mercy that God has upon our disobedience and what's inside us. Mm -hmm. And all we have to do is just say, I repent, my sister was saying, I repent <coughs> and literally and follow those three things that God mm. has given us for our daily life. Mm. So as, as we speak and as I'm hearing the testimonies, I think God is just saying to us is, those three things I've done in the past, I can do it again. Mm. Yeah, follow one. my sanctification, follow my leadership, <coughs> and you will have mm. provision from out of nowhere, but you will have provision. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Bless you. Brother Roger, um, I, I would like to say something about what you said concerning when you were looking for a job, no one came for months. For months, no one came. But when you started Logos, reading Bible, they all started coming. You see, that is what happens, you know. Um, when Jesus came and was fasting, the devil came to him and said, you know what, you know you're going to die. You know you're going to die. They're going to beat you really well. They're going to give you some lashes at your back. They're going to beat you before you die. They're going to assault you. They'll spit on you. They'll hit your head. They'll put tons of, of crown on your head. They'll carry cross before you get this world. Why don't you just bow down and let me give you this world without you going through anything, without you going through stress? Didn't the devil say to Jesus, Jesus, he said, just bow before me and I'll give you this world on a silver platter. I'll give you a cross-free life. No pain, no tears. Just bow and I'll give you the world. But Jesus Christ says, sometimes having things so freely is not from God. Not all Range Rover cars come from God. Not all new property comes from God. Not all jobs comes from God. Some of the job came from the devil in order to distract you from your walk with God. 
Not all marriages come from God. Sometimes it's to distract you. So when I see people, um, and because they don't have a job, they stop serving God. The Lord said, you can serve me well because there is no job there that will distract you. Do you understand what I mean? So sometimes the devil can bring you a very stressless life. When you start coming to read the Bible, then a good job comes. Come on, jump. And you'll be like, oh, hallelujah, I found a good job. And then when you grab the job, your spiritual life starts dwindling. So as he said, he prayed for confirmation. If that is what God wants me to do, we must always pray that is that what God wants us to do. If that is what God wants us to do, then we jump into it. Because not all free cheese come from the devil. Sometimes all the free cheese, you'll find it in the mousetrap. Be very careful. Going for that free cheese. Okay, so back to our preaching. God bless you all for sharing your testimony. It's really, really refreshing and very great and invigorating to hear all these things. I'm very happy for your testimony. God loves you. And I pray all of you will finish the Logos um, 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 course and your life will never be the same. Amen. Amen. Okay, can you give someone a high five and ask, are you ready? Are you ready for the last lap? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Can we stretch a little bit? Can we stretch a little bit? <laughs> it's not been easy. Okay, so God bless you. So now, we are going to go back. We are going to, before we, we, we you can always go back when you are able. You see the catapult. How many of you have seen the catapult? Or the arrow and the bow? Before you can shoot it well, you must stretch it back and pull it. You don't just do it and pull it. It will not go far. If you want to go far, you stretch it back and pull it. So that is what happens. For you to know more, we have to go back, recap, remember what we just learned so that we'll be able to march forward so who can remember what we just spoke about this morning where we've spoke about what what can you remember um but thomas can you remember something anything that came to your mind anything that you remember the great commission the great commission yeah um mark chapter 16 verse 20. god bless you uh and go and go and preach the gospel mm -hmm. yeah good one you go and preach the gospel Good one. And um, who did the Lord give the message? Who did the Lord appear to? Mary, Mary, Magdalene. Mary, Mary Magdalene. The one that he did what? Seven, seven demons. Seven demons. Yeah, you, we, we, we must not forget that at all because that really makes the message very, very beautiful. That makes the message very, very profound because and very significant because he didn't just appear to any person. He didn't just appear to Paul, the big man. Eh, sorry, Peter, the big man. He appeared to Mary Magdalene, the one that was used to play with demons, and he casted them out. And uh, what happened again? What happened? What again? What did you? What can you remember? Total obedience. Total obedience. Yeah. Regarding and cosmos. <laughs> <laughs> Regarding and cosmos. Good one. What do we talk about the cosmos? What is the cosmos? Uh, mm -hmm. Association, good one. Clubs, and, and I make mention of certain puppets you can have. If you may not preach here, you can preach somewhere. Where? Anywhere. A anywhere. Example? Your house. The neighbor. Wherever you go. The bus. Even in the toilet, yeah. You see, even in the toilet. Even in the, in the, in the, when you're coming from the airport, you see the, the toilet. When you visit the toilet, when we are, all of you are peeing, you say, God loves you, okay? <laughs> yeah, when you're washing your hand, God loves you. You can be teaching to the children. It's happened so much. Time. Not sometimes um, when... Um, because of something, even my kids um, 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 do it with me. What we do is that I, I sit them down and I share the word of the Lord with them. Um, because because I'm preaching and I'm in the church, you don't really get the time to have time with them. My dad, my goddaughter, my nephew. So what I do is that when in my free time, especially in the morning, even Sunday before going to church, I get them down. I sit down and I use them and I preach them. And now they can open the scripture from Genesis to Revelation. Uh, there are seven and there are eight and ten i give the bible to them open to me psalm 1 5 open to me genesis of the day and they can open it because i spend time with them so you can be a housewife and your pulpit will be in your sitting room whereby you can sit them down share the word of the lord with them so that is the world that is the cosmos can you say it cosmos, cosmos. 
Yeah, that is the cosmos. God sent them to the cosmos to go and share the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. So now we are coming to deal with. Um, so can we go back to our pivotal scripture? And that is Mark chapter number 16, the verse 15. So um, believe in Thomas, can you go with us? Can you read that scriptures for us? Verse 15. Yeah? Yes, verse 15. He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever Amen. does not believe will be condemned. Will be condemned. No. So now let's go back again slowly. I will ask you to pause where I want you to pause. He said to them, Go, go. into all the world. But uh, uh, you are not saying it well. They'll go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> he said to them, Go, Good into one. all the world mm -hmm. and preach the gospel to all creation. And to preach the gospel to them. So that's the word preach. We are coming to the word preach. Say preach. Preach. Say preach. preach. Um, 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 what do you have on the internet? Can you say another word for preaching? Preaching. Proclaim. proclaim. That, that's a, that's your version. The version is a proclaim, right? Good one. Which version is that? Is the New Living Translation or King James? The Holy Bible. The Holy Bible. NIV. Okay, NIV. And who? Who has proclaim? Okay. So another word for preach is proclaim. And what again? Can you check the dictionary right now and? inform good so he says that go to cosmos proclaim and what inform. inform and what again who can you go to the dictionary yes um, deliver. google it google it deliver. deliver go and deliver yes you can google it feel free the dictionary is at your disposal announce that's the word that's the word. do not announce announce what again there are many many words many many words speak out exactly speak out god bless i love this church i love this classes honestly so in the as i said the greek word for this is kerosis kerosis and that is as you said proclaim to announce or to herald do you get it a message once again it means to proclaim to announce and what you said, um, what did you say? Deliver, Deliver speak out, inform. informed, and herald a message. Now, in those days, in the olden days, there was a person we call the Kerox. He is the, that person is the official spokesperson of a government, a king, or of an authority. A spokesperson of that person, a spokesperson of a, 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 a president, a government, a king, or whoever who is in authority. Because you know that during those, even not during those times, this period, not the king cannot come and talk to you as he wants to. He, he cannot come always and talk to you. President will not come and talk to you. People will not come and big people will not come and talk to you because, because of the nature of their work. So what they do is that they appoint an official spokesperson the official spokesperson is there to deliver proclaim announce and you word you word again inform the citizenry of that nation about his desire of he or his policies for the people do you understand so um when pastor paul let's pastor paul being the head pastor of the church may not be able to do all the works that must be done so what he does is that he appoints someone who will be let's say at the front desk of information so whenever you need an information whenever you need something you are able to go back to the information desk or whoever is in charge of information and that person will tell you what is going on in the churches or the activities of the church what is there for the month what is there for this day what is there for that day so some people are appointed in order to say the desires of the king or to tell you his programs along the way because he may not be always there sometimes when you call um, uh, an emergency or when you call an office you don't get the boss you don't get the ceo you get the information person okay hold on okay okay can you hold on let me pass on to this person and you'll be holding on forever and the person will come and talk to you he will give you the information of the big person you give him the information of the ceo of the or the manager but he will not
He's, an, he's nosy. <laughs> he will not give information. He will, he will give information of the desire of the person. So as a preacher, the Bible says that he said that go into the world and proclaim and inform. Go and tell them of my desires, of what I want them to do. Because I have something I need them to do. I have something that I need to tell them. I have something that I need to say to them. But because they don't hear my voice, you that hear my voice, I am sending you in my stead to be in place of me in order to proclaim to them my desires and what I want them to do. Do you remember the story of the rich man and Neymar? Um, the Neymar and the rich man. The Bible says that he was so poor. Uh, Lazo, is it Lazo? Lazo, sorry. The Bible says that he was so poor that he used to eat at the, um, the, 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 the crumbs of the meal. The Bible says that he died and he went to heaven. But the rich man went to hell. And then when the rich man went to hell, he said something. He says that, Father Abraham, can you send somebody to go to the world to tell people about what is happening here? He said, no, 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 I need not to send anyone here. There are preachers already there. There are people already there who are actually conveying the intents of God or who are conveying the desires of God to man. So he says that now go and into cosmos and announce to them what I God has for them. When you go to them, what do you tell them? The gospel. The gospel. So now, your purpose of being sent out is to go and announce to them. What are you announcing? Because there is a time coming, the Bible says in the book, the Bible says that it is appointed unto man to die once. And after death, there is what? Judgment. The Lord is sending you to go and tell them that there is a judgment that is befalling us, Tina. There is a judgment that is coming to you and me. There is a disaster. You can never walk away from it. It's like a doctor that a nurse, a patient comes to you and the patient has been diagnosed. You've diagnosed the patient of a very severe sickness. What do you do? Do you let the patient go home and say, oh, I don't want her to feel bad? Or what do you do? Who can answer me? Who can help me here? I hope you are here. I know you are very tired. That's, uh, can you, do you want some water? Drink some water. Eh? Okay, what do you do? You are a doctor. You have seen a disaster in the life of someone. You have seen a disaster. You went, the person came, you did a test, you did a prognosis, and you realized that mm, there is this serious issue with the body, with the organ. And looking at the person, will you just say, Thomas, oh, I don't want her to feel bad. Let her go, let her go, so that she or he dies in peace. <laughs> or, or what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Pardon? I, I mean, what do you tell the person? What, what, what? You do what? Can we clap for him, please? Can we give a clap for the Lord? Yeah, that is exactly what you do. No matter how bad the situation is, you still got to inform them. No matter how serious it is and how bad it sounds you still you have no choice but to tell them because by telling them you have done a good thing do you understand that yeah you just went upstairs and when you went upstairs you realize that there is a small fire outbreak there and then there is a, just a spark of fire. You could see that there's going to be a fire outbreak. You just step down and you said, Pastor Paul, I'm going downstairs to get something and come. And you leave us. And you go. And so I'm just going to get something. You just leave us and you go. Do you, have you done as good or bad? You've done as bad. Why? It's wicked. Why is it wicked? You know there was a... Jesus Christ, can we clap our hands for her so well? You see, that is the thing. You will come and announce to us. You will come and inform us that, look, 
I just went upstairs, Pastor Paul. I just I went upstairs, but said there is a fire coming. Let's all walk out. You wouldn't just come and pick your coat and say, you know what, um, uh, my gym training is up and then I will come very soon. You just wait for me. I'm going to come very soon. You don't go anywhere. I'm coming. And then we are all gathered in the fire. You have done as a great disservice and it's wickedness and the Lord will punish you. The Lord will deal with you for that. So when the Lord said, go and preach, that is the essence of it. There is a fire outbreak coming and the Lord said, you cannot walk out and leave them there the Lord said go and announce to them go and tell them you are the doctor you have seen there's a serious problem with your health the Lord said it, it's not about how to make them feel it's not about how you make them feel it's about how you take them out of the fire in the book of Jude he said I snatch them from the fire and there is a fire outbreak coming. There is a disaster coming. There is hell waiting for them. Because Bible said no one is going to die twice. We're going to die once. And the day we die, we will come before the Lord and the Lord will judge us according to the dates we have. We did. According to our dates on earth. So knowing very well that our brothers and our sisters are heading towards the fire. What do you do? You go and you announce to them. This should be what should be in your mind the reason why you are preaching is not for you to feel good but the reason why you are preaching not for you to not for people to applaud to you that oh you do well you do well oh you can speak so well it's not about your eloquence it's not about the accolades of men but it is about you snatching someone from the fire do you know what we are doing we are actually on a rescue mission look at somebody say so we are actually on a rescue mission I know you are really, really tired. Just walk to somebody, tell the person. Just walk to somebody, tell them. We are actually on a rescue mission. Go to somebody, tell the person. Tell the person, we are actually, <laughs> we are actually on a rescuing mission. Two of us. Who are we going to rescue? Who are we being sent to rescue? Pastors? Everyone, can I see you? Who, who, who are we? Everyone, such as, example, Lost souls, good one. Uh, Neighbors or uncle. What race? Okay, what race? What race? But I don't know what race. All oh, races, are you sure? Yeah. I want to ask a question those who have already been found as well. Who have already been found? Yeah, the ones still Christian. The ones who Christian. Yeah. Yeah, I think yes, it's true. I like the question. I like the question. Who can answer him? Who can you need to answer him with explanation, you know, okay? You're not just going to say yes. He's asking a question that are we to rescue those who are believers? True or false? Is that the question you ask? Go. Um, but I don't. Okay. Okay, that's good. Not who's been baptized in, those that are already in the new faith, like the already in there. Yeah. So we rescue It's not a job that's done. So I imagine the trumpet past form will come to me and you may start to come into his office. Backsliding. Mm. Backsliding in the faith. Yeah. Good. Okay. You said that right. Okay. okay. We're getting Sister Lear. Yeah. Uh, it's like uh, helping the brother and sister. Mm -hmm. Going. Uh, not that everybody is going to be a great high faith. You know, sometimes they can be shaken in a faith. Maybe situation. Maybe addiction. Mm -hmm. So that time, it's just uh, not. Sometimes it's not good enough to pray. Of course, we pray, but it's. It's better we support them as a counseling, as a helping them in a situation, and show them as a, as an example. Look, I'm here for you to support you in any way, mm -hmm. and that person will feel lift up in whatever they mm -hmm. go and come back to the Lord mm -hmm. because you're sharing the love of God to him, mm -hmm. and that love maybe that person needed at that time. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Who again? Who can? God bless you. Who again? But God bless you. Do not. Who again can help our brother? can help our brother. Is there anyone? Thomas? Um, do, do, you, do you know the reason why the Bible says that when we read the scripture, the Bible says Jesus Christ sent them two by two? Do you know the reason? 
You remember? To support each other. To support each other. One they will preach. Okay, good one. And what again? Do, do, you, know, do you understand why? What again? To hold each other accountable. Good. Because the Bible says we should confess to one another. You see, one thing about sin is that, let me digress a little bit. One thing about sin is that when you refuse, when you stop confessing, it overcomes you. Anything you, anything you stop to change, you choose. Anything you stop, anything you refuse to change, you have chosen it. Do you understand? When you stop changing this, for example, this thing is here, you don't want it to be here, but you still left it to be there. You've chosen it to be there. But if you don't want it to be there, then take it away. One thing that stops sin is confession. When you are able to confess to someone, because Bible says, let's confess to one another. After for confessing to God, you are able to confess to your sister, your brother. You know what? I'm going through this and I'm struggling. Can you help me in prayer? I'm doing it. When you do that, you are one step away from your deliverance. But when you refuse to confess it and you refuse to try to alter or change it, it will become part of you. Anything you stop talking about overcomes you. But How can you confess to a loud mouth? How can you confess to a loud mouth? How do you people say it? Um, no, no, uh, someone, someone who talks to me, how do you say it? Mama, uh, gossip. Gossip. In, in Africa, we call it okra mouth. Do you know okra? It's sleepy, right? So <laughs> their mouth are slippery, so it's, uh, they want to talk. Their mouth are sleepy. We tell them it doesn't go here only. It goes here and passes here. How can you confess to someone who is a gossip mamra, talks a lot? You see, that is the reason why we do not... I might, uh, I'll come back to the message, but I need to digress and take them to straighten up the things a little bit. People cannot confess, and people are living in sin, because if I tell you, you don't keep it. The third party hears it. The purpose of my confession to you is not to be on the front page of the newspaper <laughs> or CNN or BBC. It's for you to lift me up because I have a lot of skeletons in my closet and you have a lot of skeletons in your closet and the only way you can be delivered is to confess it, bring it out to the open and then brothers who hold your hands and say, Brother, we are here with you. We will help you out of this situation. Let's pray. But not to go and meet a group of people and talk about it. And say, ah, do you know, brother, he has an issue. He has an issue. Uh, don't, 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 don't go there. Uh, he has an issue. He has an issue. Do you know another name from the devil? Yeah. Another name of the devil, accuser of the brethren. And do you know what that is? And he, he has another name to call the slanderer, which in Greek or Hebrew is called Diablo. Diablo, the snake, the serpent, the Diablo. Diablo means a slanderer. Who is a slanderer? A slanderer is someone who's telling you that who's telling you a truth. Listen to me here. He's telling you the truth, but with the intention of destroying you. Okay, let's assume Brother Thomas came to that's not your portion in Jesus' name. But Thomas came to me and said, You know, I have a problem with shoplifting. Can you pray with me? And then, instead of me to help him in prayers, then I go out and tell people, oh, you know, Sebastian, you know, you can't believe it. You know, we have to pray for our brother. He has an issue. <laughs> 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 have you met such people before? Yes. And then he comes to you, I guess, you know, you know, you know Sebastian, you listen. Does Thomas come to your house? He does? <laughs> Man, be careful. He has to listen. <laughs> When he comes to your house, be careful, be, 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 keep an eye on him. 
your remote can even it can even take your full TV set, you will not see it. He can put a TV set and put it in his smart bracket, you will not see it. You see, he, he, he's telling you the truth. What I'm saying is the truth. It's his issue. It is a challenge, but with the intention of destroying him to you. And anytime you do that, you are playing the role of Diablo. You are playing the role of the devil. So the Bible says that I send them two by two so that when the other fall it, the water will pick them up. Because there will be a time I will fall and I will need you, Sebastian, to pick me up. Because a time will come, I will lose my mind. And when I lose my mind, Thomas, you shall be my mind. When I lose my mind, Pastor Paul will be my mind. We will not lose our mind the same. So you are there, he is there, she is there. As Brother um, 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 Yarsel, we will go and bring him in. We will go and rescue him. A time will come, Pastor Paul will need your prayers. He will not lead your gossip. Because in as much as Pastor Paul is leading us, he may have some challenges. And he will need you to pray with him. But he will not need you to go and spread it. So can you ask somebody close to you, uh, will you be my brother? Or, or, will you keep, or will you keep spreading it? Ask it, will you keep spreading it? Will you keep spreading it? Ask the person, will you, will you still be my brother? Or will you keep spreading it? You see, we must be the vote. We must be this. Am I, I hope I'm making sense. I hope I'm making sense to you, right? I, 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 I believe we should be a safe keeper. We, we should be a safe keeper to keep safe the confession of our brothers. When we do that, the church will be made whole. But now, all of us are becoming hypocrites, becoming pretenders. We have issues, but we, we pretend as we don't have issues because I'm scared. If I tell you, you go and tell Brother Sebastian, Brother Zimmer, you know, uh, Pastor Abraham, he, he keeps shoplifting. You see the shoe he's wearing? He shoplifted it. <laughs> I hope I'm making so. So that is where the Bible says so we should go and preach carousels. We should go and announce. So now I've, I'm coming back to that. So we are going to announce to them the desires of the maker. We are going to announce to them that there is a fire at the top floor and all of us must step out, step out. We are going to be, we announce to them that, you know what, I did a prognosis, I did a search on your body as a doctor and I realized that there is something cancerous or there is something growth coming. And I, even though it is not a palatable news to give you, even though it's not something good to give you, I still have to give you so that you are careful of your steps. So we as evangelists, we as preachers, as we go there, we are going to tell them the truth. We are not going to give them morphine so that they will not feel the pain. We are going to tell them as it is. You are a preacher, you are an announcer. The announcer, the keros, who is a spokesperson or a spokesperson of a president or of a government, does not come with his own words. You don't come with your own words. You don't come with how you should say it. You don't come with um, um, sub, um, massaging the words. But you come as the master has told you with clear words, with clarity, unquestionable voice. You make it clear and plain to them. You don't add yours, you don't take it. The Bible says that don't add. The scriptures I've given you, don't add some and don't take some. You are going to go and say it as it is, as the Lord has said in his Bible. You don't say, you know what, um, if, you know, this is, this, this is what we are trying to do, this nowadays, democracy, that is the effect of democracy, you know, and this is hate speech, this is hate speech, and we can't give hate speech, but it is not hate speech, this is what the Bible says, if you sin, you will die. For the wages of sin is there. If you are not careful, the world will gag us from saying from what to say. They will choose us. They will give us what we should say to them. They will tell you, oh, no, that this is his speech. You cannot say so-so and so person will go to hell. So-so and so person is a sin. So-so and so this is a sin. Now they say that, no, you can't do that. It's the free will. No, 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 no. It's in the scripture. You don't have your word. I don't have my word. It is in the scripture. The scripture said, every sin, every soul that sinned shall die. 
and that is what is there bible says for the wages of sin is dead but the gift of the lord is eternal life to jesus christ our lord Bible says that those that believe to them he give them power to become the sons of God. Bible says to those that believe and they are baptized, they shall heal the sick. But those that don't believe, they shall be condemned. Is it not in the scripture, the book of Mark? So you are just a spokesperson. You are not the man. You are a spokesperson to the boss himself, and that is Jesus. Have you have, have you noticed this nowadays? I know you are tired. I'll be finishing very soon. Have you noticed this nowadays that? Um, there are some things you can't say that you say it's tantamount to criminality or whatever hate speech what are those things we're talking about lgbtq what is the word lgbtqs they are, they are now having a lot of um, words you, you see you can't talk about it it becomes now it has become a sensitive word it's become sensitive true or false isn't it true it has become so sensitive that people are so careful to talk about it even preachers are so careful to talk about it because if you talk about it then you are attacking a certain group of people but it is in the scripture you are not the originator of the word you are a preacher you have been sent to go and the word you said inform them and the word you said announce to them you are going to announce to them that this is what is in it's a sin there is a fire coming out there as a preacher so the lord said go ye to the world what's the greek word for that you heard, i heard you say paganos go paganos go into the world and the world is what cosmos and preach the word kerosis go announce admonish them go and tell them you don't have you don't have any power go with the power of the lord in the name of jesus Amen. hallelujah do you understand go and preach it go and announce it preaching simply means proclaim announce declare direct inform and what tell them, tell them in the simplest word Tell them what the master has said. You are not the originator. Say to yourself, I am not the originator. Put your hand on your chest. I am not the originator. I am not the creator. I have been sent. I am just a spokesperson to deliver a word from the man. So will I do. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless the clap. Let's clap for ourselves. A few minutes, thank God. This is this place. And now, the other part of it too is that as a spokesperson, good one, okay, God bless you all. Wish me. And as a spokesperson, what do you do as a spokesperson? Because you're a spokesperson, anything that comes from you will be accountable to your boss. And so, your delivery is also very important. How you deliver the message is very important. You are delivering, your, 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 you are representing the man. So your delivery is very important. It shouldn't be a delivery of condemnation because your master does not condemn you. I will come to that. Your delivery and even your outward appearance is also very, very important. Because whether you like it or not, man will always look at your outward appearance. Do you remember when Samuel went to the house of Jesse? He saw the brother when he was going to anoint David as a king. He saw the others. He said that this will be the king. This will be because he saw his stature. He was big, thick, tall. He was so big. Uh, not like me. Not like me. No, no. When, if, if you have seen his, uh, I think it was like, it was like, it was like, it was like, yeah, it was big. Right now, handsome man like him. He said, no, this is the king. The prophet said, this is the king. So handsome. Look at him. The Lord said to Samuel, you you look at the outward appearance the outward procretude the pomp and pageantry the beauty but i god i don't see the gucci you are wearing i don't see the armani you are wearing i can't smell it your adi your adidas adidas some of adidas some of adidas what's your accent over that adidas i don't see adidas that ghana we also say adidas I don't see your Adidas. I don't see your Balenciaga. I don't see it. All I see is the heart, the lab, the heart, 
the unseen. So you cannot judge the closeness of God with someone by the material things they have. Amen. The Bible says something. Somebody asked Jesus, where do you live? He said, the son of man. I have no place to lay my head. The son of man. He didn't have a place to lay his head. The other day when the man, the cripple, man at the beautiful gate, he saw the disciples and said, can you give me money? He said, silver, I don't have money. There is no money. I don't even have anything on me. My credit card has been blocked. I don't have nothing. But such as I have. I have anointing. I have the gift of, gift of healing you can't see. By the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the man rose up and walk. Believe that you may not have a car. You may not have a job. You may not have a house. But that doesn't mean God doesn't love you. You are more closer to him than ever before. Because sometimes this thing can serve as a distraction. So the Lord does not look at what I'm wearing. The Lord does not look at what I'm driving. He's looking at the heart. So someone said, this may be the king. The Lord said, shut up. He's not a king. This one, the king is somewhere else. Then they went and brought, he came and there was this small 17 year old boy who was even bigger than me. He was coming. <laughs> like me and they say he is the king so God is looking at the heart human beings will always look at the outward appearance you see you don't need to tell me what is in this because even the package tells me what is that it could have been a coconut water but your package tells me it's water isn't it when I go to the shop and I pick up the cook, I'm going and I, I crave for cook. I just went to the shop and pick up a cook and I paid for it and I left. Who told you it's cook inside? It could be anything else. True or false? Isn't it true? Who told you? But with some kind of confidence, you pick it up, you paid and you left. Why? It's because it's been inscribed on it. So you trust what you see. What you see makes you know that what is inside is coke. Amen. So right now, before you go to preach to people, your outward appearance is also very important. How you package yourself is very important. People will take you serious by how you dress. So now you'll be addressed by how you dress. Men will address you by how you dress. How you package yourself, how you look good, then they will listen, they will know that he has something better. But if you don't package yourself well, people will not take you serious. Hallelujah. God bless you. Now, we go to the next point. Now, Brother Thomas, can you um, give us the scripture again? The book of Mark, chapter number 16. I, I, am I making sense to you? Am I making so? I hope I'm not making the place boring. Uh, I hope so. I hope so. I hope so, Pastor Paul. I hope I'm not making the place boring. Um, so it's very important, okay? When, you are, when we are going for preaching, evangelism, we need to make sure we package ourselves unquestionably so that it wouldn't raise any eyebrow people so that people will not be attention will not be on your outfit or on how you look rather than the message because people sometimes are not listening they are just watching what you are wearing so you should be very careful of how you package yourself do you understand yes. you have a yeah, okay Leah Yeah. We present his kingdom mm -hmm. to do us. Mm -hmm. We have to be decent. Mm -hmm. Yes. But again, uh, holding the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that also is so important. Because when you preach to people, they will see not I'm preaching, but we are preaching. It's the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I I feel like uh, out 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 uh, the appearance and it's simple. And in yeah, it's, it's very true. They all comes together. It's very true. It's very true. I'll come to that. But I was trying to deal with the outward appearance because human beings, when we step out of this place, let's assume when we step out of this place and I am not wearing anything and all I have is my um, briefs and I'm preaching, they wouldn't take me serious. Is he okay? <laughs> they would say, me, I'm mad. I say, well, is he okay? But, uh, but for all you know, I am so sane 
and I'm delivering the word. But because they, because they cannot, because of how I am dressed, they are gobsmacked. And they are, we say, okay. So when I'm even approaching to them, they will not listen. I don't know. There are some places people are, because when you, when you want to preach to people, you need to be decent. You, you cover yourself really well so that it does not even take the attention off from your message whilst the Holy Spirit works in you because it, in fact you cannot go without being filled with the Holy Spirit the Bible said tarry here when my spirit comes upon you you shall be my great witnesses so it is when the Spirit of the Lord rests upon you as I said God sees the inside can you see my inside you can't see my inside can you see my inside do you know what I'm thinking inside yes but do you know what I'm thinking right now you can't see it you can't see it but I can see what you're doing now. So as a human being, I am seeing what you're doing. I, I can't see what you're thinking. All I see is what you're doing. All I see is what you're wearing. All I see is what and how you're saying it. So before you go and preach, you must make sure anything that takes attention from the message, you limit it on you. No, fl no flamboyancy, no, no extreme. Moderate, you dread moderate, okay, Sister Tina. So I have a, a question. No, okay, okay, okay. Believe those people in uh, my previous Arabic church, a lady was uh, singer, but she wearing immodest. Immodest. Uh, you see a cleavage you and. Them. You can see, uh, yeah, people come in the. Uh, we witness to people outside. They come in the church, uh, Arabic, uh, Islamic uh, background. Mm. Come, see uh, this lady worshiping. And they said, ah, this is your God, and this is your, uh, this is you and they go out. And we cannot talk to her, because no one will upset her, or maybe she don't understand. You see. Um, my question always, how can I, I approach the person? Tell her, uh, uh, how can I okay. talk to her? Good. Most of the time, it's difficult to approach some people, because they know what they are doing. If they keep doing that, they know exactly what they are doing. You see, isn't it, how many of you have experienced that? Because, you know, as believers, even though they will say God does not look at the out outward, God looks at the inside. But what is in your inside is what you bring out. So people can come to Christ, and when they come to Christ, there they are, and there you are. You see, when they came to Christ, when the people you brought them to Christ, they were not listening to what was happening. They were, they was, their mind was so fixed, fixed on the dress of the lady, cleavage, exposing the body. It will not even let people even go to God. When you do that, you are blocking God. As a preacher or as somebody who comes to stand, even if it's not even church and even it's an organization that you are giving a speech, you dress so well, don't you? Not even a church. If you are giving a speech somewhere, a parliamentarian or whatever, don't you see how they dress? They dress so well because many will be watching you and you need to bring your message across, but not to distract them by how you've exposed yourself. Because when you expose yourself, you get so many attention to yourself and then they lose the message that God sent you to deliver to them. When you do that, you have truncated the purpose of God. You have stopped, you have distracted the move of God. You have distracted the hand of God. And sometimes God will not be happy with you. So what you tell her is that, sister, you look so beautiful. Is she married? She married. She's married. Uh, she received from someone else. Uh, okay. She told her, and she said, I'm not believing in that. I don't believe in she marriage anymore. I need to look at us. God created us. God cre you see what they do? God, they, yeah. You can wear those exposing cleavages all over in your house or when you will not be coming to stand in the pulpit. But the scripture, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9 and 10 about the dress. Yeah, you see, so you have to, Bible says, you have to be modest. You have to be dressed. Uh, Timothy chapter. Sorry. So, do you want us to go there? Do you want us to read there? Okay, let's quickly go there. The, Somebody should read there quickly. I have about 15 minutes. We can do. Somebody should read for us the scripture. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. I also want the woman to dress modestly with decency and propriety, 
adorning themselves not with elaborate hairstyles or gold or pearls or expensive mm -hmm. clothes, but with good deeds appropriate for women who profess wor to worship God. You see, according to a woman who professes to worship God. Now, this is in context of women who want to come and stand, profess to worshiping God. Because what do you do now? When you dress not modesty, you take the attention from God to you. People, men, will always feed our eyes. Right now, if there's something cross here, so that all of us will go there. And then our mind will go there and you'll lose what I'm saying. True or false? Good. So before you come and profess to God, make sure anything that takes attention from you, a attention from God, you don't do it. Because you are taking them to God. You are directing them to God. But here in the case, you are dressed and now you are showing your cleavages. You are directing us to your cleavage. Unfortunately. And we've lost. You see, somebody will be praying and be watching God. <laughs> <laughs>